Hey, Vinyl Community. How's everyone going up? Hope everyone's doing well. It's been a while. I want to jump on and do a video. Um, the fam's actually uh, out of town, so I'm able to do a video inside. I've been hanging out by myself for a few days. Um, but yeah, so try, actually I'm going to try to knock out a few videos because I guess still got like huge stacks of records I need to get through. Um, just so I can find them. So it's a good opportunity. So I'll jump in. Um, I, uh, I bought a collection about six weeks ago, maybe. Um, and this is what we're gonna listen to. This is, uh, sorry, I should jump. Uh, this is the, the best of Wallace. This is Ethiopian jazz, kind of like high life jazz. Um, like if you know, uh, this was Mulat, Mulata, Mulatu, cameras, Mulatu Stak, Staki, some bad names. Um, this was his. He did. A, he did. A, was in the band in the '70s, and they did like a pretty famous album. Yeah, obviously that's not this one. He's not in this one. This was from the early '80s. I guess this is after he left. But uh, a lot of the same players on there. This here. Um, yeah. So this we're listening to. Um, yeah. So I bought a collection. Um, it, was, it was a lot of work. I paid a little bit more than I wanted to pay. Um, but in the end, I think I'm pretty much done. It was 500 records. I ended up keeping, I don't know, close to 10, around 10-ish. Um, and I still have a couple more to sell, maybe one or two more, but pretty much gonna break even. So, um, got some free records out of it. So stoked on that. This is, I mean, this is a pretty rare one. Never, uh, don't think it's ever been repressed. Um, this is pretty much why I bought the collection. I mean, there was a lot of great records in there. Uh, it was a mix of like oldies and like there was a lot of like 70s, late 70s, early 80s like soul disco kind of funk stuff. Um, a lot of the records were trash. There were some that were super clean. A, lot, a bunch were sealed. Um, it was just kind of a mix all over the place. Um, but this for me was the, the piece. Uh, a couple other records I got from there. This is uh, Roy uh, Roy Ayers' Ubiquity. Everybody loves the sunshine. The original pressing on Polydor. Um, yeah, I had this back in the, in the past. I don't know why I got rid of it. I don't think it was the best copy at the time either, so stoked to get that. Um, you know, it's probably his most famous track. Everyone loves the sunshine on here. Kind of nice. What do you call it? Like soul jazz. So that was really good. Uh, let's look at that. This is a cheap one, but I don't know. I just kind of stuck with me. This is a Humasakella Unique. This was, originally, I was going to get rid of this one. I mean, I. I actually, I had a bunch I, I kept to this, I pulled that I was, you know, I was gonna keep. Um, but there was a bunch I planned on selling, but I was, I cleaned like majority of them. So I cleaned probably, well not majority, because I sold like 300 in bulk. They were just trash, not trash, but rough. And then the other 200, I kind of dealt with them individually. And I ended up selling them like 170 in bulk. Um, but I cleaned like most of those. So I cleaned probably 130 records in like three weeks. A lot of work, but so I but I spun a bunch, um, and this is one of them. It's a pretty cheap record, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really good, kind of like jazzy high life. Um, it's a nice listen. I've actually I've never seen this two months ago. Um, this is a, this is a Yusef Latif, the diverse, the diverse Yusef Latif. This is a really good one. This one also not very expensive. One I've actually never really seen uh, before. Never heard it. So that's kind of why I like buying collections as well, because I, I get records that I just don't even know, like the Wally is, I, I had no idea about that record. Um, I'd heard the, the one from the 70s, Che Brew, whatever, before, but, you know, it wasn't like after or stuff. Um, but yeah, really stoked to get that. This is awesome, good jazz. Kind of it has some like vo cool vocals on it. Um, kind of reminds me of that Donald Bird album with voices. A little bit, I mean, just one track. A little, I don't want to say ambient, it's not ambient, it's jazz, but it's kind of like repetitive and very mellow. Um, yeah, I, I love Yusef Latif. I mean, anytime I see Yusef Latif, he never seems to disappoint. Um, he was probably one of the first people I got into jazz. Uh, his like soul funk stuff, the soul mat latitude, the Detroit one, and the latitude longitude. I can't remember the names off the top of my head. But yeah, Eastern Sounds is probably my favorite, um, one of my favorite jazz records. I have a repress of that, I still need with the original, but um, anytime I can add some music to Seth Latif, um, 
That's what we're going to do. So, so we'll pump get that. Um, the next, in the collection, there was a, another reason I bought the collection, there was a bunch of gospel records. And um, I just, I never see, I never see gospel records, really. Well, I mean, nothing good. <laughs> so, that's kind of another reason I bought the collection. There was one record in there that I, the cool thing about the collection was the guy, put, I found it on Facebook Marketplace, and the guy posted a picture of every single record, which was in a ton of, ton of work. He said he kept a few records, so I don't know what he kept, because um, there was some really good records. I think he was he was talking more about like rock. And there was a few rock records in there too, but this is the other one I saw in there that I really wanted. Um, John F. Morris, evangelist John F. Morris, keep looking up. I've been changed. So this is a gospel record. This one is like it's really rare. It's kind of you know I think a lot of gospel records are all kind of private pressed. Um, but this one was really expensive on Discogs as one comp and, you know, multiple hundred dollars. So, um, yeah, and this is, it's a private press on Pajacos, Pajacos, I don't know. I think it was just a, uh, I mean, this, this is probably the best gospel record I've ever heard. The, yeah, where's the old? Um, there's, I couldn't figure out which track to play because there's so many good ones, but this one's really awesome. Got a lot going on. Um, and the thing I like about this is, is like, dude, this is so well produced. I, I, a lot of the the gospel records I heard from the collection, they just sound like the production doesn't sound good. It just sounds like it's like one mic in the middle of the church or something, you know. Um, but yeah, this guy was definitely using a studio, and yeah, and you can't. There's, there's none of this is online or anything, so. I never would have known, um, but yeah, this is just like, I think it's only sold once, it's just super rare, but it's killer. Yeah, so good, so good. Um, so yeah, this was the other piece I sound, and luckily, the two, the two I really, well, there was a... There's a lot of really good records in the collection, uh, but they were beat. There was a couple of Pharaoh Sanders. One I already had. I was hoping to upgrade. And then another one, I think it was Live East. Live in the East. Uh, that one was rough. The Funkadelic was rough. That I said. Um, there was a, a couple Jimmy McGriffs that I wanted. I needed to upgrade, and those were rough. They're like the really good ones. Uh, the one with the girls in the front, like eating. Ice cream, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, something funk, instant funk, or whatever. So, but there's some really good gospel records, and this is a, this is the other um, John F. Morris record. So the person was obviously a, a fan. This one is much cheaper, actually. You can get this one for reasonable, and this is live. But I'm surprised the the production is still really good. So this guy definitely was very talented in the studio. I mean, this was a live record, but he was just very, he obviously knew what he was doing. I don't know, because his records sound fantastic. I highly recommend this one too. Not as good as that one, but still for the price, I think it's like 15 bucks. You can probably get a copy. Um, so yeah, this is, this is really good too. And then lastly, also another, this is him and his wife. This is their first record in the early, the mid, late 70s, 76, I think. Same label, they're all on Pacheco's. I think that's the only three. Pretty sure, maybe there's one more. Maybe there's one more record he did. I can't, can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, like th this is production on this is really good too. Um, it's probably my least favorite three, but he's, he did, it's just so good. It's so good. And this record just got some bangers after banger. There's like a couple slow songs, even those are great. The next song is like a bluesy song. It's just so. Um, this is another gospel record I got from the collection, um, St. Louis, St. Louis gospel -esque. Um, you can't hurry God, um, this one is on Checker, white label, um, this one I was going to get rid of, but it's pretty good, it's, it's, it's a solid gospel record, but there's, the first song on this is just fantastic, um, and I think you can find it on YouTube, um, but yeah, and they have another record that I think is more valuable, probably. I think it's because this one's on a major label. I think the other one was like a private. But this one, it's just solid, solid gospel record. 
Um, this is the last one from the collection, I guess I got. I guess I kept eight records, but this is um, the Voices of East Harlem. This is on Just Sunshine, which I believe is um, the, I think that's the label that Betty Davis was on. Um, but yeah, this is produced by um, Curtis Mayfield. So it basically sounds like an like a impressions record, but um, female vocals. There might be guys on here too. I think there's guys and girls, but a lot of female vocals of prominence. It sounds like a impressions with a bunch of female singers on it. Um, really good, solid record. Uh, yeah, still to get that. So that was, that was the collection. That's what I got from it. So that was my spoils, I guess, from the collection. Uh, I think it's still worth it. I don't, I won't think I was looking for any of those records, honestly. Uh, so that was, that was really cool to find all that. I wish, Wish I could have kept a couple that I sold. The one gospel record I, I sold for a pretty penny was, um, it was, um, I don't know, I liked it. It was really good, but the, just the, it just sounded like it was recorded like one mic in the middle of the church, you know? I know, I just couldn't get into it. Um, and then uh, and I sold another one, Nation Time, which has like Gary Bartz and Lonnie Listen Smith. It's really good, the music's amazing. Um, but it's spoken word, and I just, I don't know, I couldn't get past the spoken word. Um, but the if there was no spoken word, the music was just fantastic. But again, I sold it. I liked it. I wish I would have kept I wish I could have kept it, but I was just trying to get some of my money back from the collection. Um, but speaking of which, so that was the collection, but I have come into a bunch of gospel records. I never have, I never have gospel. This is the Religious Souls. Um, I just, for the last, I don't know how long I've been collecting, almost 10 years. Um, just never, never cross, come across any good gospel records. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic record as well. Um, I did, I bought this one on Whatnot. It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't, I paid way less than what it goes for online. Um, The Religious Souls, again, it's a private press gospel record. It's really good. There's some banging tracks. I mean, you just look at that cover. You can just tell it's going to be... Fire. Yeah. And this one is another one that has like, it's really, it sounds really good production. I definitely like the ones that are in the studio better than the, like in the church. This is another one. Um, I came. I've had actually had this for a long time, but it was supposed to be for somebody else. Um, but yeah, that kind of fell through. But uh, again, private press caught up. The miracles of God. God is records. So yeah, this one's really good. Not as good as the other two, but it's still a solid record. Solid gospel record. Um, I think it's the these guys are out of LA, Los Angeles. So, really good. This is, this this cover was badass, it just attracts me. This is uh, Sound of Aquarius Performing Arts Ensemble. I don't, I have no idea where I found this record. I, it was sealed and I opened it. Um, I had it sealed for like maybe a year. I was trying to find it online to see if I could um, get some sound samples. And I, I, I just, when I said F it, F it, and opened it. I was like, I was listening to all these gospel records and I was like, oh, I have that one up there. So I cracked it. So I was just like, just listening to like, man, it was a night. I remember I was like pretty, <laughs> I've been boozing up a little bit and I was just in the garage just freaking blasting gospel records. And that's why I was like, oh, I, I just kept wanting to keep going. So I cracked this one. Um, it's pretty good, but it does, it does sound, it does sound like it, it's very lo-fi recording. Like it sounds like yeah, one mic in the middle of the church. Um, but there's some really cool playing on this. I wish the, I wish it was recorded better. There's a couple tracks. There's a sax player, and a sax player right there. And dude, it's like one track has like fuzz sax. It's really good, but it just it's, it's so hard to hear the saxophone, and it just 
really lo-fi. Um, so yeah, I kind of bummed about the recording, but um, yeah, it's good. It's probably like that other record I sold, but that one, that, the other record I sold was like super rare, so I got a, I got like a pretty big chunk of change out of it. Um, that one's, I don't know if you know it's ever, it's only been sold like, a cut, there's a couple comps that are like super cheap, so there's no reason for me to sell it to make 10 bucks. I, I, you know, it's pretty good. Um, this, this is another one, uh, the famous car caravans. I won't be back um, on gospel. Um, actually, I don't quite remember. I mean, this is. I think it's just another solid, you know, solid gospel record. Uh, found this one for cheap on whatnot, actually. Um, but yeah, I think it's also a little bit lo-fi, but um, still pretty good. Say much. I can't quite remember just the gospel record. I don't know. I've been kind of in the gospel record mood lately. Um, so, um, yeah. Here's a couple. Right here's a different collection. I actually, I just, I just got this one as well. Um, I bought it because it had this Tom Waits Rain Dogs original, super clean. I'd also, I also got an upgrade copy of Love. Um, there was a couple decent records, there was some Bowie, um, I actually did a whatnot show and I tried to flip it to make my money back and I got my ass handed to me, unfortunately. Um, I, the, this other copy, I sold my copy for, it went for three bucks, it was, you know, it was a decent copy, VG, but I, yeah, I just got taken. I thought I was going to get most of my money back, but I got just cleaned, but it's all good. I got that, um. Tom Waits, probably like maybe a little bit more than I would have should have paid on Discogs. Didn't quite work out, but it's a super clean copy. You can't complain. But yeah, this this record. So I'm actually doing pretty well in time. I just got a couple more records. Like yeah, I said I got. I kind of split it up by the collections, and I just want to throw in a couple weird records that kind of just. I'm gonna do some other, um, some other uh, videos, maybe like genre specific. Like I got some bunch of soul, I got some rock, some jazz, some Brazilian. Um, so this, these, these were kind of like just kind of weird outcasts records. I don't really listen to, would you know, don't really show. Um, this is La Mysterie de Vox de Vox Bulgaris, um, and this is the original press. I think this is. I don't remember this is, oh, it's made in Switzerland. This is Switzerland press. Um, but yeah, this record is phenomenal. Um, and I don't, you don't list, like stuff like this, but not that I don't like it. I just, you know, I'm never gonna listen to it, but this one for some reason was just so good. That's it. hair on there. But yeah, it was just one night. I And I don't know, this just records something about it. Um, there was one night I was in the garage. Um, I got tons, I got through a lot, but I have tons of records that I needed to like clean and listen to that I had got from um, that I bought from this this like um, this guy on one night was selling like 10 records for five bucks but it was an auction so they got bid up but anytime there was like weird stuff being shown no one was bidding I was buying it um, so this record was in there but I actually I, it was the repress and I don't know I was just like in the garage flying one night and I just we was listening to a bunch of records from there, and I was not expecting to like keep this record or anything. But man, I don't know what it was, but this record just—I couldn't stop listening to it. It was so, so good. I don't know why. Um, so I ended up, but it was—I think it's my my friend does samples and stuff. So I think it—it's uh, a very sampleable record. Just all the voices and stuff. I think you do a lot with it. So I. I ended up buying the original that night, 
<laughs> so I gave him the repress. Um, see if he can make some samples with it. And I kept this. Uh, well, yeah, I bought this from Switzerland. What's funny is because I bought this too because it was like a near mint copy. The other one was maybe like a, a VG Plus or maybe Strong VG. It had a little bit of marks. But this was near mint. That, that one actually played like slightly better. So I don't know if it's depressing or what. Maybe I'll deep clean it again. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah. So I guess these are Bulgarian singers. I really like the, the label too. It's almost like one of those like little wood flutes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, and you know what's funny is I was just listening to it today and it reminded me of this. Do you guys, anyone know this record? Uh, Vast? I got this a long time ago. Actually, I looked this up. This is like a pretty pricey record. I got it for cheap like well, five years ago. But, um, but there's a song in here. I think it's called Touched. And I swear, this sounds like this. It sounds like it, he sampled it from here. The, this first track. I'm sure you know. I think it's called this part. I think it's called t Touched. Yeah. But I swear he sampled from this. Play a little snippet from Vast. I swear, I don't know. I just today just struck me. I was like, no way. And I haven't listened to this record in so long. I'm glad I got it. I do. It's a pricey record. And I had no idea. Um, but yeah. I think it's only vinyl press, 311 and 500. But yeah, I was lucky to get this. Someone had some, like a few copies, and they were selling them. This part. Dude, it sounds like it, right? <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> I swear that is that sample. Anyways, so that is that. I got one more record, and what am I at? 23? What? No way. It's like my shortest video ever. Last but not least, Richard, Richard Wayne Freed. So it's another like kind of music I wouldn't really normally listen to. Conwell, but I'll just play like the middle, like towards the end of the second side. It's really good. So this is Klaus Schultz, um, band or alter ego, or I don't know. He plays guitar with, um, I don't know, someone from Ashra, someone from Santana's on here, whatever. It's really cool. It's just like a, kind of like a, I guess it's like a, you know, it's German, obviously. Um, it's a German pressing. It's kind of like electronic rock, sort of. But it's on the keys. It's not so much rock. It's kind of like a... It's got that, like, repetitive ambient. Um, yeah, but I was listening today to it. It tripped me out. I was just watching Never Ending Story with my kids. I don't know if you guys remember Never Ending Story, but that movie was huge. But I didn't realize that the soundtrack was... Um, the soundtrack is from a German. I guess the movie is like originally German. I don't know if those actors, is it dubbed? I can't, now I'm like tripping out. Cause I noticed that the the composer, his name was like Klaus or something. I don't know if it's Klaus, but it was like obviously German. Uh, 
what the soundtrack kind of reminds you of this a little bit like so I was listening to this and it reminds me of like when he's like in the swamp and he's like no I train you don't be don't give me to the sadness you know? I was like that do I have to do <laughs> so, I don't know this tripped me out but this reminds me of like that burning story a little bit uh it's really good. I mean, it's pretty mellow, pretty chill. Like this part right here, when he's in the swamp. He's like, sadness. It's everywhere. <laughs> oh man, anyways, I'm cracking myself up here. But that's that. Richard Wayne Free. So that was a good one. Another what, what not purchase. Got that for super cheap. It's a nice thing about whatnot. No one's looking for records like that. So I'm able to score some stuff. But yeah, hope everyone's doing well. I will do probably a couple more videos here in the next couple days. Peace.